I'm just going to go through these. I was going to have a break, but I'm not going to have a break. I'm just going to go through these last slides. They all are different diseases, and I'm showing what the Center for Disease Control is telling me, and I'm plotting it against the consumption of aspartame. You can figure this out yourself. Okay. This, this is deaths for multiple sclerosis. Again, look at that change. In just 10 years. Lupus, another autoimmune disease, only it's located in, in tons of different places in the body, but all associated with the circulation. That methanol is coming out of the circulation, or the, the methanol is going in to the veins and the, and the arteries and turning into formaldehyde and causing what looks like an autoimmune disease, but really isn't. Your immune system works fine. Now, it's just they're doing their job, and their job is to remove formaldehyde modified protein. This is it, breast cancer. Dave, I think we have a, a question. And take a look while well, we're talking. Just take a look at this breast cancer. Look, see what happened here? Just as one would expect. Formaldehyde is now all over the world recognized as a human carcinogen. Even in the United States, just a few years ago, somehow the formaldehyde uh, foundation let it happen, I guess. Okay, I'm sorry, can I have your question? Uh, yeah, just on uh, the fact that the, the circulation and you've got the formaldehyde in your system and you get either the breast cancer or the lupus, uh, once it's there, uh, can you, in a sense, detox your system from the formaldehyde, or is it just that's it? People ask people ask about detoxification all the time, and I know uh, people think that that should happen. That you know there should be a way of detoxing, but here's what happens: it's like uh, this, it's a statistical it's a statistical phenomenon. It's like sh shooting you know Russian roulette. Um, it happens. It happens relatively quickly. The, the time delay between consumption of methanol and the first symptoms is a long wait. It's about 18 hours or 24 hours. But what that means is that the formaldehyde is in there doing the dirty work. Uh, you can't detox. What you can do is stop poisoning yourself and let your body heal. Your body's good at healing. Every tissue in your body over a period of five years is changed completely, even the bones. It's new. Every, about every five years, something's like aligning your intestine changes every 48 hours. And so that's, that's your hope. As long as that magic bullet, that formaldehyde, didn't get to the nucleus, didn't methylate the wrong gene at the wrong time, then, and you're free from cancer, then fine. Count your blessings and put down the poison. So that's the answer. No, thing, no such thing as detoxification. But if you stopped consuming methanol today, you'd be completely free of formaldehyde in 48 hours. Okay? Does that answer your question? Okay. So, uh, just one more question before you carry on there. Um, you mentioned before diet sodas and cigarettes as being the, uh, the main uh, sources of methyl methyl alcohol in our diet, where else would we find it? Um, where this all began, where this whole, where these diseases of civilization began, this is going to, this will knock a lot of people for a loop here, but where this all began was in the canning, canning process, okay? So just like GM, you all consider canning, you all do home canning, your grandparents do home canning, and it's a big thing to you. Uh, it started in it started in 1807 when a fellow, a Frenchman named Appert, developed the canning process for Napoleon, and he won an award for Napoleon for giving him food for his armies in the winter months and that kind of thing. In the beginning, they were just they just canned uh, meats because of the cans were so expensive to make. Some of the canned meats they had whole hams and cans and stuff like this, but canned meats no problem. Uh, canned fish is no problem. It's just when they started to can fruits and vegetables, 
That's when these diseases started. Okay. Now you're all shaking your head. You're going, oh, this is hard. But it had to start somewhere. These diseases, like multiple sclerosis, started in about the middle of the 1800s. And they had to come from somewhere. It had to come from somewhere we, we, that we consider safe. And that was it. That was the mistake. It's like GM now. We don't know what we're doing now. But, you know, 150 years from now, if there's anybody left, they're going to know exactly what GM does. Um, but here's the important thing to consider. Canned fruits and vegetables. What happens with canned fruits and vegetables is you're imprisoning the pectin that's part of the fruit and part of the vegetable inside of this sealed container. In that container, sitting at room temperature, methanol is released. Now, I go into this in a big way with MS patients because MS patients are the most sensitive people in the world to methyl alcohol. There are some people that are, I'm working with, they can have a spoon of spaghetti sauce and 18 hours later they've got a headache from the methanol. Okay? Most people are not that sensitive. And to put it into perspective, the methanol in a, in an, a can of orange juice is one fiftieth of the methanol in a can, a single can of Diet Coke. So this is why this is why these diseases shot up so quickly and so and so radically. So I mean, say, where did it start? It started 150 years ago, 200 years ago, and and that's where it comes from. And it's diet. It's it's all the diet, not just Diet Coke, but all the diet products that contain aspartame. That's the problem. Are there any natural foods that are occurs in? Uh, two natural foods. The, the worst is, uh, and still, we're not the same levels as in diet soda, but uh, black currant juice is naturally high for some reason. We don't know why. And tomatoes is high enough where I recommend that uh, people who have MS uh, limit their tomato consumption. But that's it. It's very rare. In my, in my website, there's a free list of all those things and it's called the Monty Diet, but it's no diet. There are only 10 things I've got listed there that people who want to avoid methyl alcohol have to avoid. But uh, again, there's a huge override with diet products, with aspartame. This is something that is not natural and can't be allowed. Yes? Yeah, hi. Um, could you tell me, is that, is that anything to do with... Uh, the chemical reaction between the metal can and the veggie matter, or? That's a really good question. No, it's just a natural kind of thing that happens with when pectin in water is made to sit at room temperature. It just naturally releases some methyl alcohol. Okay, and it's what about freezing? Does that have the same effect? No, if you freeze, no problem at all. Okay. Freezing is no problem. You can, you can do, and with the people that MS, I recommend that they, they just, uh, process the food the same way, as, way, except they freeze it instead of putting it in a jar. One other question sure. in regard to cigarettes. Uh, uh -huh. Does Roll Your Owns, uh, <laughs> uh, does roll your owns um, have a lesser or greater degree uh, of this methanol content? I don't I really, no, no smoking is, all of it has. I honestly can tell you that um, Cigarette, uh, burning of cigarettes, uh, because of the huge amount of, of, of acid, uh, not acid, um, of fermentation that goes on during the processing of the leaf, that produces a lot of methanol. I know some people don't ferment the leaf and just work on the, meth, on the uh, nicotine, uh, but I'm, I'm saying that you're taking a chance with smoking, and that's probably why smoking is the cause of so many diseases yeah okay one other question sauerkraut um i think sauerkraut i think uh fermented uh products like that that are fermented at room temperature have more ethanol in them and uh probably are so, yeah. the sauerkrauts that i tested in my laboratory i didn't do a lot of them but uh, i couldn't detect any methyl alcohol thank, thank you sure it's a good question thanks um Professor Monte, I've seen a lot of documentation warning about the uh, dangers of soy, unfermented soy. Uh, Is that true? Oh, when I got it's a carcinogenic. Soy. Well, soy. I mean, 
I'd better not go to that right now. I want to talk about aspartame, I want to talk about methanol, but thank, I'll talk to you afterwards though. I know too much about soy. One, two. Um, professor? Yes. What about um, tomatoes? I heard that uh, tomato juice is full of lysopen, it's very good for you. If it's in a plastic container, the same process as being... Okay, I'm glad you're asking this question. Here's a scoop. If, it's, if you've got a fresh vegetable, a fresh vegetable, and you want to eat that, hey, great, eat it. If you want to juice it, or watch your friend juice it in the corner, and drink it, hey, that's great. Okay, except for, except for black currants. <laughs> but if you consume any fruit juice that's in a Tetra Pak, or in a can, or in a product that you buy in the store, or whatever, they're all got some ethanol in them. And if you think that you're really sensitive to methanol, you get away from it. Nowhere near as much as in the diet products. Nowhere near as much as in the diet products. But for people who are sensitive, or people who want to be really safe, and the other, what's the, what about the other alternative? The other alternative is, of course, the ethanol thing. Okay, I really, I, for, for 12 years now, after I learned this, every day I wake up, because I don't drink much alcohol. I'm not the dependable alcohol drinker. I'm just going to tell you what I do. I'm not telling you that you should do it, but I have a I have vodka in my refrigerator, and this is, embarrasses people, I'm sure. I open it up. I have a one shot glass. I pour a shot of vodka. I throw it in my drinking water that I'm going to drink for the day. In Arizona, I, it's three liters of water a day, and in New Zealand, it's two liters of water a day. And I just drink out of that bottle, and I'm getting a little bit. I'm getting one shot of ethanol for the day, and that should clean up any of the minor. But, but people who think they can drink a Diet Coke and add some alcohol to it, it's too much methanol. It's too much methanol. You can't fight it. But just for daily living and, and living a good life, that's great. But, you know, does that help? Yeah, thank you for that question. It's a great question. Okay, kidney cancer. Look at this in the United States. Look at the rate of kidney cancer. One yeah. aspect. I'll just show you these. We'll just go through them. Melanoma. What's the worst thing in the world? Okay, melanoma. You're all worried here in New Zealand when your ozone layer disappeared. You're worried about the UV, the UV light. Well, there are fibroblasts. These fibroblasts that are, I'm talking about, they're in the skin. There are lots of them in the skin. It's where melanoma starts. It's where basal cell carcinoma starts. They have alcohol dehydrogenase. <clears throat> so you're out there laying in the sun in, in Oz, you know, and you get a little thirsty. Well, why not drink a little diet zero, or whatever the heck they call this stuff? Okay, what's going to happen? Within 20 minutes, all that methanol is in your bloodstream. Fibroblasts are converting it to formaldehyde. So what do you have? You have a combination of UV light rays and formaldehyde. Cancer, two cancer things at once. So would you think that that would increase the rate of melanoma and other skin cancers over a period of time since some food product that is consumed in the summer that produces methanol alcohol? Well, there, guess what happened? Look at that. Doubled. Liver cancer, the liver has got the highest concentration of alcohol dehydrogenase in your body. Naturally, it's going to be affected because its proxosomes don't work either. Even though it's a great protection, it, it does all sorts of marvelous, has all sorts of marvelous mechanisms to save you, to protect your, your, the rest of your body from harm. That's why all the food you eat goes through the hepatic portal valve right to your liver and gets filtered by the liver. Well, guess what? <coughs> Methyl alcohol still ha makes its mark. And again, three times the increase in liver cancer in the United States was aspartame was introduced. Well, this is like, there was one scientist, Dr. Olney, who was the, the scientist that stopped aspartame from being approved. He warned repeatedly at congressional meetings and at scientific meetings that this particular kind of cancer that he was worried about was going to increase if they allowed aspartame into food. And he, like myself, published what happened. Tremendous increase in that particular kind of brain cancer. It's minor as far as the number of people it affects, but he was right. And the FDA still ignores him. Rumsfeld and the Coca-Cola companies and 
you know, and these cartels from the United States and Japan are telling the world what to do because they've got the toxicologist on their side. They're the only ones who are paying toxicologists these days. And they're going to do what they say. That's, that's absurd. The evidence is too clear. This is the last slide of, of, these, of this type of slide, of the scientific stuff. And I'm just showing you this because this reminds me to tell you okay, that there's a big difference in all these diseases between men and women. Of course, breast cancer, we know that. But even MS, you know, the incidence of MS is going much more, many more women than men. Now it's increasing the number of women are being affected. Previously, smoking was a cause of MS. And when you, and when you smoke, the methanol gets into your lungs and gets into your brain pretty quickly. When you consume a drink that contains methyl alcohol, men have much greater protection than women. Because men, for some reason, reason have a much higher level of alcohol dehydrogenase in the lining of their stomach. And that actually can remove the, a lot of the minor methanol that they get in their food. So men, you know, their atherosclerosis comes from smoking, not from consuming methyl alcohol uh, in their diet. So men are protected. That's why there's all of the diseases like lupus and all that are much higher in women. It's because men have that protection. Why it is, nobody knows. But it all comes from, we know that men and women, even though they're equal size, will often, the women will respond uh, much more violently to large doses of ethanol. And that alcohol dehydrogenase causes that difference too, as well. That's very unusual, but that helps explain a lot of, of the mystery in some of these diseases. Why do they occur more in, 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 uh, in women than men? And this is what happened with this particular thyroid cancer. Look at the increase in... This is in, uh, in men, and this is in women, over that same period of time. The best explanation for all of this, the best explanation, probably the only explanation for all of this, is the formaldehyde produced inside sensitive organs by methanol from diet soda and other diet products. Good science doesn't lie. The science is there. You take, if you have a, if you have a real interest, you know, take a look at the book. Um, there are two free chapters. Read those first. I have all the references free on the website. You can read the references.